temple of film means that we're not going to turn it into some kind of circus. We're not going to pull off crazy pranks. And besides, guys, stop laughing because this is a scary movie, and Bobcat really wanted me to, uh, you know, make sure that we would be, you know, frightened and it's not about. Guys, guys, you're not listening to me at all. Dave, I think you might have to handle this. I can't do this anymore. That, no respect for movies at all. Dave, can you please come up here and introduce this movie? Damn it, I'm sorry, Peter. I picked this guy up on the 401 tonight, and he just sort of stuck with me. I'm happy he's here, and we're really happy you're here. My name is Dave Alexander. I'm the editor-in-chief for Rumor Magazine. Uh, you're here for our CinemaCob movie night that we do every month, but this one is part of Toronto After Dark, which is really fun because we get to bring the chocolate and the peanut butter of film lovers together. And damn, is it ever tasty. Especially when we have a Bigfoot movie with a couple special guests tonight. Um, you're going to get to meet Mr. Bobcat Goldthwait, shortly. Shortly. Woo! On a... Um, just thank Toronto After Dark for having us here and uh, some of our other sponsors that do great things for us. Uh, Crack and Rum, Suspect Video, all, all fantastic folks. Uh, and let's give away a few prizes for you guys tonight. I thought, yeah, I thought I'd make it really simple though. Um, as long as we have uh, a hairy situation up here, I was wondering if there were five people that have a burning question they've always wanted to ask Bigfoot, if they wanted to come up and ask in person. So the first five people that come down here and have a question are going to get a prize. Anyone? No takers? Well, here's one. Come on up. We've got stairs on that side. I see two. I see a third. Oh, we're going we're gonna to fill it out. All right, so he's a little bit shy, so I'm going to run interference. So ask him the question, and then he's going to tell me the answer, and I'll let everyone know. Tell, tell us your name first. Uh, Boing Dean. And... If they hadn't already cast it, would you have considered doing Fifty Shades of Grey? Uh, he says he, he's a huge fan of the novels, but he's very protective of his twigs and berries. <laughs> Come on over here, Ali's going to give you a prize. And give our Bigfoot a high five. Hell yeah. <laughs> Next up, sir, what is your name and your question? My name is Michael Bennett LaRue. Um, and I'd just like to ask him if he knows that he's real and like just questions about his mortality and if he really exists and you know, what he, the eternal question. So the, the question is, are you real? Does he feel real? Does he feel real? Do you feel real? He said, if a Bigfoot pushes over a tree in the forest, is anybody here? <laughs> It's an existential question with a philosophical answer. But you got yourself a prize. Well done. All right. Name and question, sir. Uh, I'm Dylan, and I'm just wondering why does Bigfoot let so many cheap imitators do his job, you know, play him in films where he's clearly the better option? Why is he so shy? Like, why does he not take over the film for us or for the filmmakers? It's a great question. In a nutshell, he, you know, there's mall Santas, you know, the real Santa is, you know, he's got a lot of stuff to do. Well, in the case of Bigfoot, he's been trying out for a part in the Star Wars franchise for like freaking decades. So he kind of concentrates and his career coalesces around that. I know that's a lot of information that he just told me in a few seconds, but that's, that's basically the answer to your question. So thank you for asking. Does he know they do CGI now, though? Because he's barking up the wrong tree. Big, if there's one word to describe Bigfoot, it's organic. Okay? He's old school. Old school! All right. Give him a high five. Hello. I, I know it sounds a little bit cliche, but hang with me for a second. If a tree falls in the forest on your foot, how loud can you swear about it? <laughs> if a tree falls in the forest... On your foot, how loud can you swear? So you asking for what I think you're getting at here is you want to hear the biggest, loudest Bigfoot howl, right? Okay, let's let's give her a go. You you should hear the one that he does if a tree falls on his nutsack. It's crazy. Great question. What's your name? Kyle. Kyle, get yourself a prize bag, Mally over there. 
Hey yo. All right, sir. Your last stop. What's your name? Xander. Hey, that's part of my last name. I like that. Cool. Uh, what's your question? Obviously, you're a big celebrity, but can you confirm deny actually knowing Jack Black? <laughs> oh, this is a popular question. I've read about this on Twitter a lot. Do you know Jack Black? Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can you put your hands and big feet together for Mr. Bobcat Goldplay? <laughs> so we'll get into it a little more of the Q&A after the film. But uh, just to get people warmed up, uh, tell us a little bit about why you made this movie. Why a crypto zoo movie and why a found footage film? Uh, well, well, thank you. Um, I, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say hi and thanks everybody for coming. Uh, that's, a, that's a hell of a turnout um, on a Thursday night. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Morgan and, and uh, of course, Toronto After Dark and, uh, and Sasquatch and... Um, <laughs> Uh, I know I'm forgetting. Oh, and uh, Honest Ads, that's why I bought this scarf today. Um, $3.95. Um, when he died, what did they bury him in? How, how cheap really was he? Um, chicken bucket? What? Um, a ball of scarf. So I. Uh, uh, yeah, this, why did I do a found footage movie? Uh, uh, a, a question I ask myself. I'm um, not the biggest found footage fan, actually. I, I often wonder, who found this footage? You know, what kind of creep found it and said, hey, I'm sorry your family got raped to death, but if we re-edit it, I really think there's a tremendous picture in it. <laughs> Sorry for your loss, but she would have wanted it that way. Uh, uh, but I, I try to stick to uh, what, what I think works in found footage, and, and not that you need to count, but there's only 67 uh, edits in the movie. Um, uh, so it's, it's kind of, I try to stay true to the idea that you're watching the, the garbage that's in this camera. Um, uh, I made this movie because I've always been fascinated with Bigfoot ever since I was a little kid, and I'm fascinated with the Patterson-Gimlin footage, and that's the footage of uh, Bigfoot. Here, will you model for me? Yeah, doing that. If you've seen the footage, one of the things I like is I've spent a lot of time now in the Sasquatch community that uh, it's a woman, uh, Bigfoot, the uh, Bigfoot people will tell you. Yeah, because in that footage it has breasts, which I, I just love the eureka moment for some... <laughs> Bigfooters who are like, holy shit, this is, it's a Bigfoot with tits. This is the greatest day of my life. Um, <laughs> this is a perfect storm if it, if it only had a beard. Um, so I, um, uh, you know, initially w when I went to this place, uh, Willow Creek, I, I, I thought I was going to make like a Christopher Guest kind of comedy. But when I got there, it just seemed to lend itself to do a, a, a scary movie, and hopefully you, you, you find it scary. I will, uh, I'd like to say this, I just played it in Germany, and I will like to say that there is comedy in it. Um, the, the Germans didn't laugh at all at any of the comedy. And then when, uh, then when shit hits the fan, then they were laughing. They, they, uh, <laughs> They're German, you know, and, uh, and then afterwards they go, we're going to have a party uh, in a old prison tonight. And I was like, uh, I'm not falling for that again. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just letting you know that it, 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 there is humorous elements in the movie, hopefully for you. And uh, uh, I have to say, I, I am comfortable being in front of a crowd, but I, I truly am overwhelmed by how many of you are here, and it, it means a lot to me. And I, I, uh, thanks. And, uh, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back for Q&A, &A, and, and then I'm sure I'll be over at the office pub, too. <laughs> God bless Canada, the, the sequel to God bless America. <laughs> okay, opens.
Crack house. A mayor stumbles out. <laughs> Let's see if I can write it. All right. No, they, they shoot the majority of the movie, and some of the stuff we'd have to reshoot because Bryce was actually a pretty good operator, and all of a sudden, you know, he'd do zooms and pushes, and, and he, we'd have to do it again so it looked more amateur. So it looked, uh, you know, I, you know, people bring up the Blair Witch Project, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, I have to see that movie. No. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't mind the comparisons. Uh, people will say it's derivative, and maybe that's true, but, but there's a lot about the Blair Witch Project that actually was good, and then uh, it seems like people who make found footage movies now jettison it, you know, the, the things that did work in that movie. Um, you know, I, I called this the Blair Squatch Project. Uh, when I showed it to Jimmy Kimmel, he called it uh, Scary in the Hendersons, which I like that. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of those people in the movie are residents. Uh, they're, they're, they're real, you know, like uh, Steven at Bigfoot Books is real. Uh, Anita, the, the woman that doesn't believe in Bigfoot that runs the visitor center, uh, it's amazing that you have her, you know. That's their main livelihood after growing marijuana. I don't know why they wouldn't encourage Bigfoot. You know, I don't believe in it. Nope. Uh, I, I kind of love her. Uh, but um, there are people who are actors who are fake, but uh, most of those people, like, I, like the native woman who speaks, uh, her name is Sean White Guy Sr. That's a real person. I wouldn't write that name. It's too weird, you know. Uh, uh, a Native American Indian named White Guy. It's a... Uh, senior. Senior, yeah. Apparently, I don't know if there's a Sean White Guy Jr. or whatever. Uh, but, um, so yeah, the, a lot of those folks are real. Uh, a lot of those folks are nervous about being filmed because uh, Bob Saget had just come through uh, not long before me, and he was doing kind of a snarky uh, take on Bigfoot. And um, so they were a little camera shy around uh, another 80s comedian named Bob. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I, I kind of want them over. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to poke fun at these people. That's why I said earlier, I would, you know, initially I thought I'd do like a uh, Christopher Guest kind of movie set in that world, but I really didn't think I, I wanted to pick on these people because, and, and as far as like subcultures, there's very little, uh, people don't really go, hey man, they're Bigfoot people, cut them a break, you know? It's like, it's like uh, Star Trek enthusiast, Ren Fair people, then Al-Qaeda, then Bigfoot people, as far as people willing to listen to what they have to say. Uh, so uh, that's why I switched it up and, and tried to do a suspense movie instead. Uh, those Al-Qaeda conventions are not very popular in the fan community, by no, the way. No, well, the, the fanboys, uh, they uh, <laughs> check their sneakers. Uh, they, um, uh, I went to the Bigfoot convention and um, the, the uh, uh, Corey who had his uh, Bigfoot costume, he made that himself and he did a good job because Bigfoot has a flat head in that, his suit. And in the community, Bigfoot has a, a, a flat head. They don't believe he has a pointy head. They, they think that's Spielberg bullshit from Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> that's fake. So um, <laughs> I was at a convention and there was a guy who had a pointy headed cardboard cut out of Bigfoot. And this other guy walks over and he goes, <sighs> You disgust me. <laughs> and he goes, well, he goes, look at that head. And he goes, really? I've seen Bigfoot three times, and you'll never see him because you smoke. I, I guess Bigfoot doesn't like uh, tobacco, but uh, he likes grass. They love their weed out there in the Bigfoot community. You know, um, I, I was out there recently with the fellows, and uh, one of the things they put bacon on the fire because uh, Bigfoot likes to smell of bacon, and I'm like... Yeah, so don't bears. Uh, bears like bacon too. Uh, and it was really fun because I was out with Tommy Amarone, the guy who sings in the, he's the, uh, the Bob Dylan of the Bigfoot community and he was with us and uh, it was a special part of the night where he ran out of Bigfoot related songs and uh, started performing Jewel. <laughs> It was written a lot of Bigfoot songs. It was really, yeah. <laughs> that, that dude with the shorts and the guitar singing Jewel. Um, 
That was probably the, the thing I couldn't predict the most of all the experiences I've had there. And then he does a really sweet thing. Like he's, we're walking in the woods with no flashlights. And we're really, you know, I can't explain it. There's no planes going over. It's really, really remote. And, um, and, and classic horror, your, your phone don't, it doesn't work, and GPS doesn't work. And, and uh, so we have no lights. And then he, he's calling Bigfoot. He keeps going, whoop, whoop. And then he'd go, so uh, tomorrow morning we're going to get up early. And, and what I thought was beautiful was that little, huh. You know? Like, hmm, that's weird. He usually picks up. I don't know what's going on. This is Friday, right? Because I told him Friday. Huh. All right. So, uh, you know, and, and he just would do that all night long, you know? I, I didn't, you know, I think of uh, Sasquatch and other things like, like, like when I watch a, a, a horror picture and the devil shows up, it's always, it makes me laugh, you know. It's like, oh, that doesn't look like the devil. Because in your own subconscious, you have your own ideas. So, so I didn't want to do that. And The Legend of Boggy Creek is, is a movie that really inspired this. And, um, uh, and, and, and they have a little Bigfoot in there, but not too much. But then there's... Um, and also the, the movie Grizzly Man, that, that, uh, the Werner Herzog movie had a lot to do with this movie because, you know, the, the, again, the, you, know, you don't see all the horrible thing and, and this is one guy's drive that, that, that ends to be their downfall without getting too uh, pretentious. When Timothy Treadwell looks into the eyes of the bear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's one of our favorites around. I love the, uh, the Inuit guy who goes, I think the bears didn't kill him because they thought he was, like, maybe retarded. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, don't, I know that's a proper word, but I don't know what was worse, me saying the word retarded or me doing a horrible Indian impression. <laughs> so... Um, there's, uh, there's a belief in the natives people that, that Sasquatch would actually uh, uh, steal women for concubines. So, so that, that's, that's what I have in my mind. But um, uh, I also know that at that moment, if I cut to Bigfoot, it, it, it wouldn't have been as frightening, you know? Um, somebody said that this movie's everything men scare, uh, afraid of, a male thing, like, like being shot down when you propose. Seeing another dude's penis, uh, and seeing someone that looks like your mom nude. <laughs> so, so maybe that's it, you know. Oh, well, I've written a whole bunch of screenplays, but um, I've been working on getting a musical going. Um, I know. Uh, uh, yeah. He shakes the clown, too. Uh, no. Uh, still shaking. Um, uh, that would be a prequel where they're like angry teens movie. Um, but uh, so that's this thing with Ray Davis of the Kinks that I've been working on called, it's an album from the 70s called Schoolboys in Disgrace and Woo! that keeps going along and, and hopefully I'll make that someday. But I just finished a, a new screenplay. But I, I've written a, um, a, a, like a zombie fetus. I know zombies are played out, but these are fetuses that uh, attack an abortion clinic. And, uh, and, uh, it's called Ankle Biters, and uh, <laughs> that's one I wrote recently. But I, um, <laughs> there's a, a I, I want to tell, if, okay, we'll end up if, uh, with a, a quick story that makes me laugh, and uh, it's just, you're a nice crowd and everything. I have to tell this story. Um, after we saw the, the mountain lions, it was, uh, it was scary, and we had a ranger with us. And uh, so I kind of stuck with the ranger, thinking that uh, he was going to protect me if we get attacked by a mountain lion. So at about 3 a.m. around the campfire, he goes, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a writer, too. And I go, oh, oh, really? What do you write? He goes, well, you know Twilight? And I go, sure, everybody knows Twilight. He goes, well, I write uh, tween novels set in the Bigfoot community that are coming of age stories for teenagers. This is 100% true. I go, oh, what's the name of your novels? He goes, well, the first one's Yeti or Not. <laughs> and I'm going, I'm going to be eaten by a mountain lion. <laughs> so, but, uh, 
you know, uh, Grandpa here is not on the... the uh, that's me, Grandpa. I'm not really... If you enjoyed the movie, just tweet about it. I'm not on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm not on Facebook. There's some guy saying he's me, so don't get pissed if I don't talk to you, because uh, that's not me. It's really weird, but I don't know why I'm digressing. My daughter's like, there's some guy trying to get laid on Facebook saying he's you. I go, I don't know why you'd do that, you know? <laughs> when can people own a copy of this film? Um, it, it's, right now we're actually, uh, the, the Canadian distribution hasn't been set yet, but, but I'm starting to, to sell it to different, uh, countries, and so it, it'll probably come out next spring. It, it, it will come out as a product, um, and, uh, yeah, it'll probably be next spring, I'm hoping for, you know. Awesome. Well, everybody keep your eye out for it. Tell people that you liked it, and you had a great time at the screening. You're now all apiists. <laughs> Please give Bobcat a big round of applause. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much, man.